right, today we're going to watch the Wilson Puppies play the local uh, team elevate from the York County School of Technology. I wasn't available for any of the band stages. Can you tell me what happened? Uh, I believe Barney banned FD. I do not know what the other two banned, but then Barney selected Small Battlefield as his stage of play, as it will be Bowser versus Lucas. They were in... Uh, th they can. We can enter the battlefield at any point uh, and start the match. So let's see this go down. What are the weaknesses between a Bowser-Lucas matchup? Bowser really struggles against fast projectiles. Lucas has decent movement, very good air game, and two rather annoying projectiles within PK Thunder, PK Thunder, PK Fire, and PK Freeze, as PK Freeze would be able to take Bowser's stocks at very early percent if Nash is not equal. Now, Lucas also has his neutral area, which can combo Bowser multiple times into itself, as it is a very fast multi-hit that surrounds Lucas's entire body. But Bowser does have the benefit of Lucas's weight, as Lucas is a very light character, Bowser with the power to take stocks at early percents. So what we saw there was a lot of aerial juggling of Bowser, which isn't something you normally see with that heavier character. What does Lucas have to do? All in the side B to trade stocks, and Lucas cannot make it back from that. I would say that is a good trade, as Bowser was around 110 at a good percent for Lucas to take the stock, and Lucas was around 60, which would be difficult, as Bowser would need to land three to four more solid hits before he could even be in the range to take a stock. i say that's a smart play, but I wouldn't say it's a sportsman-like play. <laughs> well, if, if the Lucas is standing too close to the ledge and you get the chance to do it, why not? Because now look at this, the tides have completely turned in the opposite direction, with Barney taking the lead in percent. Barney seems to be holding his own against the Lucas in what is a very disadvantageous matchup for the Lucas. Mostly because of the speed, like you said, but also the ability to chain combos and zone Bowser out of the game. Uh, ooh, a, a nice spike. The spike hitbox actually being a downside, as if it was the secondary or later hitbox, it might have taken stock as the secondary hit of Bowser Downer does send up. You said secondary hit there, can you explain what that means? So, Bowser's Downer has two main hitboxes. The first hit, which is the spike hitbox like it is there, where Lucas would fall down with the Bowser, and the secondary hit, which would send Lucas up or out to the side, depending on where they get hit on Bowser falling. Like right there, the landing hitbox, which would be the third hit, which the entire body of Bowser and slight area around him would be hit by uh, Bowser's landing. And the up smash to take the stock. Uh, a very powerful move, bringing it back to a uh, closer game. Barney knocking him out of shield. Double up tilt to get 22%, I believe that was. That is a decent amount of damage against Lucas. Lucas being near percentage to take the stock. 50 the neutral be coming out. Oh, but down to 54. As what do you mean down to 54? Does that mean that Lucas just healed? I didn't think that was a mechanic in this game. So Lucas down special, which is Psy Magnet, can heal if he absorbs an energy effect projectile. Now Flame Breath, which would be Bowser neutral special, would fall under that same category. Wow, Bowser up special. Almost taking stock there. Barney's in a very good spot. Going for the F-Tilt punish on the PK Freeze to try and take up side B. Mike Dave might do it. And Ooh, bad DI takes that stock. Good game. Impressive game from that Bowser. Uh, in what is a disadvantageous matchup. You can really tell at certain points that he was struggling with the, uh, with the character, but he played it smart and he played the matchup correctly. Can you walk me through what he was doing to find success there? So now, the way Barney was playing, he was taking advantage of Lucas trying to land on him with up tilt, which is one of Bowser's fastest moves, covers a very wide range, and deals, I believe, 11 or 13%, depending on how stale the move is. Now, Barney was just playing very well. He wasn't letting the Lucas space him out, which is one of the major downsides of the matchup. He was constantly rushing down. But the one thing I think Barney could play a little better in the matchup with was he heard PK freeze, he started panicking, he started running from it, rather than just going straight in. You may hear a little bit of noise in the room. Our other game, Bone Breaking Bulldogs, the team that played last week, just lost their first match of the set, uh, but not the first match of the game. There are three... You want to explain the rules for the people at home? So the game, uh, the sets are played in a best of three format where your player has to win two out of three games against their opponent to take the point for that turn. So 
where Anthony just lost that first game, he can still win the set if he wins his next two games, which would be a 2-1 record, Anthony winning with two wins over the one win his opponent had. If he does. But if then it's does. still possible that the next two... Uh, uh, the next game ends with Anthony losing, and the set would end 2-0, as whoever reaches two first wins the set. That's still not a lost game for the bone-breaking Bulldogs. See, there are two other people on the team who then have to fight their own set of three. I think you're one of them? Yes, I am the second player for them. <laughs> All right. But let's get back to the game we're actually watching. Uh, we just had Brendan Barnett <laughs> win his first <laughs> win his first game. I uh, believe the first set for Blitz was also lost. I believe a Jigglypuff beat Fred's hero to it. You hate to see it happen. <laughs> A rough day today for Wilson Esports, but we're still coming through pretty strong. We got Brennan Barnett here doing his best. Uh, Why don't you tell me a little bit more about this ban process that's going on right now? So let's see. Uh, It's for a different game. (laughs) Uh, It's going to be Town and City, Bowser v. Lucas again. Town and City. Now, the one main downside of this is the stage is gigantic. The biggest stage in the entire rule set that Play Versus allows. Bowser really will struggle to get those early stocks on Lucas, but Lucas still can get the benefit of his down air can spike Bowser at very early percents with a multi hit spike, as well as his neutral game is very good on a stage like this, giving him more space to run away. Seems like uh, Lucas here is a little tired of that down, uh, the down aerial hitting him. This falling shell is a scary option, as it does deal a decent amount of damage. It's very fast and really difficult to punish with that landing hitbox. Shielding up on it. Up tilting out of shield, up the different option, which might have actually mixed the Lucas up, as it looked like he cheap to try and avoid the up out of shield and all the up tilting. There's a trade forward tilt for EK Fire. And there's the big blast zone to town coming in. Uh, a really good play by the Lucas there to put you that uh, that side magnet into uh, Bowser's it's flame breath. Yes. Flame breath. Um, uh, Not being able to mash out of PK Freeze in time. As the mash ability that you can use to get out of PK Freeze goes up for how much you need to mash based on the percentage you have. So Bowser being at 100% makes it very difficult to mash out. Good forward air to land, punishing neutral air from Lucas, which is one of his hardest moves to punish. There's the down air that beats out up smash. That was a very good option. Lucky lucky though, because Lucas up smash does have invincibility frames on its startup. We're seeing a a much smarter game from this Lucas in the second match. Reading the roll with that up smash. Sitting there charging, playing for it. What a parry! Now, Bowser down B, which is where he does the more of a sitting fall rather than falling in his shell, does break full shields no matter what percent the opponents are at. So, right now, this is a pretty, uh, pretty dire situation for Bowser. Not necessarily, because Bowser does have the survivability, being the heaviest character in the game. And Lucas, those stocks can be taken. It's just, if this Lucas starts playing more safe, starts playing slower, starts protecting himself with three fives, it will be very difficult for Barney to get in. PK Thunder. Get up attack. See the up tilt there. Not even above 100% set off screen, but not out of the blast zone yet. And there's the up smash's invincibility coming into play, avoiding the first hit that would have knocked him out of it. Really good comeback by that Lucas. I think he really played smart. He figured out what Barney wanted to do <coughs> and was doing his best to stop him from coming up with the answers he needed to win the game that time. Uh, interesting to see what Barney will do in this third match. What would be your advice? Get a smaller stage that still has platforms, small battlefield being a perfect example, as it's a very small stage, has two platforms to play on. Town and City has the transitions where there's no platforms is the biggest stage so the best bet i can think of the best bet i could think of would be smashville okay uh 
because Town City's so large, does that take away one of his kill confirms being that over B? Side B's kill confirm percentage would go up by about 20%, which is a crazy amount considering Lucas's weight. How'd you come to that number? Now, Bowser's side B has its initial knockback, and without rage, which is what I would be basing this on, his side B would take Lucas' stock on a normal stage around 110, and on Town and City around 130, as the blast zone is much higher. We're going to see Barney switch to Pyra Mithra, uh, one of the best characters in the game. Mithra! Right now, currently the second best character in the game is Mithra, very fast, has a very large sword, can put constant pressure on the opponent. Pyra, having that kill power with her flaming sword, her flaming moves, they're just a little bit slower, too. So can you tell me, what do you think? That, is this a good switch? Is this a better combination than... This matchup would be a lot better, as Lucas was benefiting from running. Mithra can catch up to him before he ever gets the chance to run. Okay. Well, do we see any uh, fear from the side magnet and Mithra's throw the blade? No, actually, because side magnet can only absorb energy class projectiles, which flame breath would fall under. Pyra side B, which is where she throws her sword, technically isn't an energy projectile. It is just a natural projectile that would Three, spin in front of him. He would not be two, able to absorb it, one, but his forward smash go. could reflect it if he reacts to it in time. Interesting. So already we're seeing that this is a very different character uh, with a lot of kill potential. Already up to 41%. Pyramithra have the ability to deal damage just as fast as Bowser and have the ability to completely disengage. Because right there, Barney gets hit one time, jumps away, runs to the other side, resets neutral. That's all he wants to do as Pyramithra's neutral is much better than Lucas's. Are we seeing a lot of up tilts from Barney right now? Yes, but up tilt, as other characters, up tilt would be a very slow option, very risky to throw out. Mithra up tilt is actually one of the safest moves in the game because of its insane capacity. And there it is. Pyra Mithra. Mithra's side B specifically is a very good option to punish slow moves. Now, Mithra side B, it's fast, it deals a lot of damage, it's a multi hit, and. When you see it happen, you see Mithra teleport all around. That is because her hitbox is currently moving with how she does in that move. Prominence for Volt. Grabbing the ledge instead of going for the dive, which was smart as Lucas was trying to get the AK freeze if Barney chose to dive on him. And there it is, charging the F smash, expecting side B, ready to reflect it. Back throw, they take it, it does not. Smash again, because Lucas really likes that move. What do we see here from the, as a kill confirm from Mithra? Pyra Mithra. Pyra has almost all of her areas that tilt attacks can kill, as well as her up special, which is what it looks like when he's trying to the stock with him. But he does have to worry about the lag, the end lag on it, as it is a very slow move. And he is up to he takes the stock right there. It's a crazy strong move that comes out pretty darn quick. Lucas's landing options. So there it is, Photon Edge. Gonna get the mix up on landing. So I'm gonna let uh, I'm going to let you take a take a quick break from this because your game is about to start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then we'll hold off as we I'll, watch I'll our way through this. this. We'll finish this game. Mithra side B cannot reach ledge if it is not currently on it. An unfortunate game, but a great, Lucas, great win. comeback by that. Lucas. Let's keep going and watch these Wilson puppies. Thanks again for your help, Aiden. Let's yeah, no move problem. on to our next announcer, Anthony Gow. We'll go over his game real quick as we talk about this game. See ya. See ya. It's just me right now. Anthony doesn't exist. Oh, wait. There he is. Look at that smooth transition. Uh, 
So, why don't you tell us a little bit about what was going on with that game there? So, that game was uh, a lot more rough for me due to uh, Snake DDD. Uh, me, one, I, there's not a lot of Snake mains out there, so I would not know how to fight a Snake properly. Two, Snake is another character that requires a lot of experience to fight, ironically, due to the fact that he relies a lot on explosives like grenades, uh, C4s. Uh, really, really, he it seems to have like a whole arsenal of weapons. I don't know where he got them from. I would love to know. Uh, probably the Black Moses facility, which is the place in the first Metal Gear Solid game. Right. Well, they, they must have supplied him with quite some quick grenades because he can pull them out quite quickly. He can use them as a combo breaker as well, and he can use them for the grenades. So what you're saying is that basically uh, Snake uses a bunch of weapons from his arsenal in order to uh, control the stage. Right. He's a very stage-controlled base character. Uh, and what, one of his strongest attributes is uh, his advantage, where he can either juggle you with his up smash, which, unlike most up smashes, is a projectile, an explosive, uh, I believe, RPG. And um, Oh, yes. There's two. It's a Nikita and an RPG. Right. Well, the Nikita is actually a different tool, although just as effective, due to the fact that you can control the Nikita as well. Um, and another thing that most people forget about Snake is that his disadvantage is a lot easier than other characters due to the fact that while you do still take damage from your grenades, you could also use it to escape combos. So while you might take an instant 30, you could have prevented um, an instant 60% combo instead. So what else can you tell me about how this uh, Snake was able to... We're having a few troubles with our internet connection right now. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to see what we can do about that. Uh, why don't you tell me more about the game you just played? Right, so the game I played, uh, due to my lack of experience with Snake, I ended up swinging, uh, I mean DDD, I, I ended up not uh, using my F-Tilt enough and been using my uh, Gordo too much, which he was able to exploit. Gordo, not only could it be sent back at you, is also a risky, laggy move. And uh, due to the way it works, where if you take more than 2% damage, and as Snake being the explosive god he is, uh, you can. He always uh, has uh, two percent damage uh, on the stage somehow, at least. So uh, Gordo ends up being very unsafe. Another thing is that uh, he Snake. Uh, I I did not exploit the fact that Snake also takes damage from his grenades. As good as they are, they also hurt him. One of the qu easiest ways to deal with Snake is rather uh, to make him bait out grenades. He does. Uh, he doesn't need to throw. So then you can either toss it back at him, or you, or he can use them as a as a way to prevent himself from being on those stage parts of the stage as well. I should have taken b better advantage, I mean better care of my advantage. Uh, another thing I forgot was that meanwhile, if if juggling Snake can be a chore as DDD due to DDD's low jump and the fact that Snake can throw little C fours down uh, onto the stage, preventing uh, me, pr uh, doing damage to me and preventing me from uh, exploiting my advantage to its fullest. Well, it looks like we have our first, uh, our, our arenas back up. So next we have Kazuya versus Zero Suit Samus. Uh, what can you tell me about that as a matchup? Um, well, the, the, the thing that Kazuya always wants to look for is his advantage state, where he can do a lot of damage, and um, specifically his Electric Wind God Fist, which at 60 can lead up to, his up smash, to a charge up smash, which can uh, take stocks as soon as 80. Um, now, Zero Suit Samus is also a very mobile character, so Kazuya may ha may or may not have trouble catching up with uh, Zero Suit Samus due to the character being known to uh, to flip kick a lot or her down B, and which is her little um, jump jump kick, and that jump kick uh, makes it her very hard to catch in some matchups, as well uh, as not to mention that she also has disjoints in her whip. Uh. What earlier you said Kazuya wanted to look to be in his uh, win state or his power state? Advantage, yes. His advantage state. Can you explain what that means? So me? the so there are three stage stages in uh, Smash Bros. Disadvantage, neutral, and advantage. Uh, disadvantage is the person uh, either above the character or off the stage, or generally uh, for, further from the middle of the stage with the stage control. Now stage control is obviously how much control one has over the stage, and uh, the goal is to. Um, have more control of the stage to constantly put pressure on the opponent. When the opponent is under pressure, they, they rack up damage easier, and under damage, it makes them uh, be able to kill easier. Uh, when Ka Kazuya has a very powerful uh, advantage in, in particular because of how easy it is for him to rack up damage, whether it be his laser, uh, his his combos especially, or just the fact that he is quite a good juggler. Uh, what do you mean by quite a good juggler? So, um, when your opponent is above you, what you can do with to keep them up is to use your up air and, and to repeatedly chase them down and make sure they don't land. 
Because once they land, they gain their second jump back, which uh, gives them an extra tool and disadvantage. However, if you don't prevent them from landing at all, uh, a character that I play that's especially good at, at this is something like Ridley, then uh, with then it is a lot easier to keep just racking up easy damage on them. And a lot of characters, what what ends up happening is that, um, you know, d despite Snake being in the game, they, they can uh, land very easily. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, Zero Suit is a very mobile character, and I think that Kazuya, as a character, I, I can't speak to Jack in particular in, in the player, uh, would have trouble in that match. Right, right. Um, I, I believe it's uh, it's it's something where like the zero suit Samus uh, can basically jump all around him. However, if however she has to be very careful as uh, Jack essentially is a nuke. If she even touches one wrong button, she's getting blown up. That's just how the matchup is. So while yes, zero suit Samus um, may jump, kick, juggle, do whatever she wants to Jack. If Jack lays a single finger on her, she, uh, it, 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 it could very easily be lights out for her. So we finally have a stage with Pokemon Stadium 2 coming onto the field. Uh, we're looking at Kazuya versus Zero Suit Samus. Kazuya, obviously, from a popular fighting game Tekken. And Zero Suit Samus from popular, uh, well, I guess it would just be a Metroid game. <laughs> a platformer, I assume. Uh, uh, I was going to say a Metroidvania, but it's right. just a Metroid game. <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, to be fair, the Metroid series is known for their shooters as well, being Metroid Prime. Yeah, I can I can hear that argument. All right, let's get started. Anyways, Pokemon Stadium Two is an interesting choice because uh, I would assume Kazuya would have a lot of, a lot of trouble um, in this big stage trying to catch this uh, slippery slippery One, character. Go! However, however, at the same time, there's also a lot of combo potential with the uh, platforms, which Kazuya really likes. So I, I assume he's taking a bigger risk for a bigger prize. This this kind of stage pick would uh, would actually be quite cocky because it, it would have to assume that you would be better than the pl other players to put uh, these advantages to your fullest. And over here, we can see that uh, our, our Kazuya man, Jack has racked up a lot of damage, but the Zero Suit Samus is. Uh, It's, it's, it seems to be an unstable connection in some ways. Uh, but, but Jack is holding on with a slight percentage advantage. Definitely well within kill range right now. What is the average kill range for Zero Suit Samus? The average kill range for, for Zero Suit Samus, uh, the interesting thing with Zero Suit Samus is that she normally doesn't kill by percentage, but through edge guards. Now, what edge guarding is, is knocking your opponent off the stage over and over again. Now, by doing that, uh, you, you can take away their double jump, you can take away their, uh, air dodge you can you can just knock them at, at an angle where they can't recover with their up b that is how zero suit samus mostly gets her kills however uh her average kill percent uh she normally goes for things like uh, neutral b to f smash or up b for up b it can go uh up to like 90 for certain characters though i assume for kazi i'd be more like 120 for uh up smash it would be more like 135 what we're seeing here is a pretty close match that sam is taking a really nice stock away from jack and then punishing him before he's able to, to react in kind. Right. Well, what, what we're seeing from this, um, what we're seeing from the Sam is that she's playing around her neutral beat a lot, and uh, a lot, of, a lot of down smash reads that she's trying to get. However, down smash is also a laggy move, so again, it's not something you want to go for every time. However, once you do get it, it provides her a lot of stun, stun options. That was a beautiful play by Jack there, reading the. Reading the attack by the Samus. Right, looks like missing right. the grab though. Again, once uh, Jack can even like uh, go and advantage at, as little as once, it can very easily be terrible for the Samus. However, as you can see, the Samus is trying to prevent that at all costs by by using range ranges more than Kazuya. And that was a lucky air dodge. The fact that that combo could have gone out for like a 50% uh, potential she didn't do that. And she's looking off with a very nice lead. Uh, that's a whole stack of edges in the these things. However, as you can see, Kazuya racks up damage quite quickly. That was uh, 20% of his 10 hit combo. However, that 10 hit combo has sometimes um, a habit of not fully connecting. Really good plays by Jack here as he's putting the pressure on the Samus to make sure that she 
really respects the Kazuya. Right, uh, and, she, and she seems to be respecting the Kazuya a lot. However, she also seems to be playing a lot more at range. Uh, so, some would even argue it would it would be uh, a lot more defensive than uh, Nor when Sanders normally does, as she likes to rely a lot on up air jumps. However, she's not going for a lot of moves, but rather a lot of uh, dodging, rather just slowly racking damage over time to make to further her advantage state instead of uh, putting too much eggs in her basket. Eggs in one basket, hoping to just get the kill by the edge guard. Oh, oh, and what a what a noble what a, attempt. What a what a sad ST here. Uh, now, as some as some of you may notice, this Kazuya he's glowing red. Uh, Kazuya has this me mechanic where if he's glowing red, um, he can he can grab potentially grab the opponent. Oh, what a what a lucky pass. He there's still a chance for a comeback. All Jack has to do is catch her one more time. But yes, what that grab does is that it, it, uh, it grabs someone and does a lot of damage, around 35%. And it can kill a character as heavy as K. Rule at something like 70. Oh, Samus is at 60 right now. But... However, she, the, the uppy is an infamously good kill move that has a lot of ways to uh, be baited into. Whether it be, it be through comboing or even just not a shield option. Uh, what is an out of shield option? So an out of shield option is when your character sh when your character shields, uh, you the out of shield option is a quick way to get the opponent uh, off off of your shield to prevent further shield pressure from you. Some characters may have an easier time getting characters off of others, comparably Bowser and DDD. However, so, however, most characters what they normally do to get people off of them is either Uppy like with Game and Watch, Nair like with Yoshi and Wolf, or Up Smash like with Wolf again, or with something. Or even with a character like uh, Charizard, for example. Okay. Uh, can you explain how, how that would work with the shield pressure? Uh, so, basically what happens is that um, uh, with their shield pressure, uh, there's there's a certain mechanic called shield stun, which is how much end lag you're moving. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we're gonna, we'll be right back. So, we're going to bring up our splash screen right now. All right, we're back. We just had to handle some technical difficulties on our ends with one of our playing teams. Uh, it looks like the Bulldog Blitz may have lost their second match, but I, I don't have a confirmation on it. Yeah. Beekert's won, so that's 1-1 one, one for the Bulldog Blitz. Oh, it's totally possible for a comeback. It's a 1-2. 2-1, two. Two, one, they won. Oh, well. Look at me, knowing how the teams play. Uh, we have 1-1 one, one for the Bone Breaking Bulldogs, who are going into their third match. Uh, and now... Oh, but... And now he's... It seems as if the Zero Suit Samus is showing his Zelda characters. Normally this is odd, because uh, the player who wins normally stays your same character. 
but as we were talking about before, there have been some technical technical difficulties, and it looks like the lag spikes are, are going to be a little bit more forgiving to Zelda. At least that's what I've heard. Yes, yeah, so there, there, however, Zero Suit Samus is also not a bad character to play if your Wi-Fi uh, it is, is not the best due to the fact that, again, she's very hard to hit and her hitbox is very forgiving. So, I, I'm not an expert on, on Zelda, but I do know that you want to keep an eye out on her ability to keep you off stage with a few of her uh, abilities. Uh, I know that Phantom can scoop the edge and be a wonderful edge guarder. But what other uh, what other abilities does Zelda have that make her so formidable? Right. Well, while Phantom is obviously a huge part of that, another thing to note is her air game. Her air game um, has a has potential to be extremely powerful, killing as early as something like 70 off off the ledge. Her forward air uh, sweet spot, uh, the lightning kick, has potential to knock out even the heaviest characters at ledge at something like 90. A spicy move by the Zelda there, following Kazuya very far off the map. Oh, she is bold. Well, I have to say. Trying to get that kill confirmed. Kazuya at 130, 148. Dying to, I believe that's Din's fire. Right. That's another. Th that's another thing I was uh, going to mention. Din's fire works si similar to Nikita. Din's fire works similar to Nikita in the sense that it, you can it can follow uh, people around as well as an explosive, meaning it's meaning it's normally extremely powerful. And as you can see here. The Zelda is trying to keep her space. However, Jack approaches anyways. They, the Zelda lands in uh, predicts uh, the shield and then lands in F smash, and Jack launches her off stage. The Zelda seems to just want to get back on stage as soon as possible, but Jack seems to be denying her opportunities. Doing a fun tech that one, our very own Aiden Sprotty likes to do of teleporting to the center of the ring, trying to confirm a kill with your up smash. Or is that the up tilt? I believe that I believe that was the up smash. Oh, she goes for a lightning kick, and she just got it. So while that was not a strong spike, however, it, uh, due to uh, Jack missing an air dodge, there's a mechanic in this game where after you air dodge, you get put in a lot of end lag. And due, and due to him not up being fast enough, he, uh, he was just short of the ledge. However, <coughs> it seems to not matter, as the game seems to be about even again. <laughs> exactly 18.9% for both of them. Oh, and we said it too soon, as now Jack is at 40. The Zelda seems to be wanting to go for a lot of 1 2 combos. Missing an F smash. And Jack puts her in, in his own, own tempo combo, doing a whopping 65%. Jack playing a little cautious now. 99%. She goes for the. Right, well, it's one of Zelda's greatest. Uh, Trace is actually punishing uh, too much reckless uh, aggression uh, due to her playstyle being more of a sword. And that could be it. That oh, is not short. it. Just short of kill percentage. Oh, Kalos, Kalos, everybody, has a, has a habit of, due to their uh, huge sky hitbox, a lot, of, a lot of moves that would kill earlier do not. And that, and that was a potential kill as well. Uh, I, however, I do not believe that was charged, so uh, Jack could have easily lived that as well. You're gonna see Phantom nearly scoop the edge guard there. Get a throw. Phantom is great, especially great against Kazuya, as Kazuya's per, uh, recovery is extremely predictable as it only goes up. What we're seeing here is really impressive. Two. Um, a missed up smash that could have been game. As we can see here, the Zelda's kept his facing. Dens fire. Doesn't quite get it. Oh, the, the knight almost gets a kill, and the lightning kick finish, finishes him off. It's a it's a good match by the Wilson puppies, but sadly, that's going to be the end of their game today. You can't win them all, folks. Sorry about that. You can't win them all, folks. Uh, Bulldog Blitz won, and the bone-breaking Bulldogs seem to be doing well in their third and final match. We'll keep you updated by virtue of updating you next week. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add, Anthony? Um... Well, I, I just have to I, I just have to say uh, come up here sometime and just just say hi to us. I, I'm a nice guy. We'll work on that. <laughs> uh, I, thanks for watching this live stream. Uh, it was a great match by the Wilson Puppy. Sadly, it ended in a loss for them today.
but that doesn't mean it's the end of their season. They're going to come back from this, and they're going to keep playing just as hard as they have. One been. loss does not define a career. Yeah, I believe it was Sun Tzu who said uh, the start no, of actually, any journey. I, oh wait, wasn't it wasn't it Shakespeare? Did he said something like that. It was Shakespeare. Hold on, I'm being asked a question. All right, I'm going to keep just saying thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day from the bowels of the administration building. I've been Matt Zatrone. This has been my friend Anthony Gow, and we've been the Wilson Puppies game. Have a great one.